Hello there and welcome to Schofield Studios. And I just saw Godzilla vs. Kong. After five years of anticipation, eight months of asking for a trailer or some footage, and one year of me waiting to go back to the movie theater, it all happens at once just one hour ago. And it was really, really great to be back in the <coughs> movie theater. <coughs> oh, got a cough. Anyways, it was so great to be back at the movie theater. And it's also so great to see another Godzilla film and another MonsterVerse film. So was it good? Well, that's probably the question you're asking because you clicked on this video. But I'll tell you in a second. First, tell me in the comments if you like the movie. Now sit back, relax, and let's watch this intro. And to start out with the good. It delivered on what it promises. Godzilla versus Kong. Obviously, ever since Kong Skull of King Island, Skull, Kong Skull Island, ever since Kong Skull Island in 2017, we've been wanting this film. We've been wanting to see Godzilla versus Kong once again. Because the 1965 version, version had Lego buildings. Although the 1965 version is good, still you want to see it with better CGI, better effects, and in the MonsterVerse. Now you're getting exactly that. Three things to go with this. Is the fighting good? Can you see what's happening? And was it fun? Yes, yes, yes. First of all, the fighting was really fun. I mean, they don't pull back. Godzilla uses his atomic breath to his advantage. Kong uses his super strength to his advantage. And that acts. And since this is a non-spoiler review, another kaiju that comes in later that I will not be talking about does have a lot of stuff he can do and does use this everything to his advantage so the fighting it's fun it really is it's also very clear i mean yeah you have to be realistic if it's nighttime or daytime but you know let's be honest probably the only problem with me with the godzilla 2014 movie is that you can barely see what the hell's happening. It's so dark. You can, I mean, it, it's good, but it's still, you, it's still dark. You cannot see the fighting that well. You cannot see Godzilla that well. This movie, you can see everything, specifically every detail. So that was pretty cool. Also, the last, hour of this film, the last 50 minutes, is the biggest fan payoff I have ever seen since Endgame. If you're rather a Godzilla fan or a Kong fan, you are gonna be very satisfied with the end of this movie. I mean, there's a little, I mean, you don't know who won. There is this debate of who won in the last five minutes but overall that's the thing they're able to satisfy fans on both sides overall this movie was fun it delivered on what it promised Godzilla versus Kong it has great action it was fun it it was just a very great film you'd expect sadly though not every movie has no flaws and what makes it a movie is that it has to have some flaws. So, um, you know, there's a couple bad things here. So let's move on to the bad. Uh, 
And probably uh, the biggest problem of the film, and the only problem of the film, if you put it in a way, is the human characters and their part of the movie. Okay, let's go back to 2014. Let's go to the Godzilla movie. Sure, there wasn't that much Godzilla fighting and action, but there was a lot of monster action with the Mutos, and that's not to say that the human characters and the human plot lines were good. You're not going to the movie to see human characters in a story, but you get that, and you know, that's nice because it's not all just monsters fighting. Same thing with Kong Skull Island. Sure, they're not one-dimensional. I mean, they are one-dimensional. They don't have layers to them, but it's a great cast and you have a lot of fun with them. Then Godzilla King of the Monsters came. And, you know, it didn't have that many good actors. The, the writing for their plotline, the human parts of Godzilla King of Monsters, it wasn't written good. It was pretty boring and lackluster. For this movie, it's kind of the same thing. You can break it up into parts. You see, there's uh, this woman and this girl who goes, who's blind and she knows how to talk to Kong. We just get introduced to them for like one scene. One. Then there's this other guy who kind of looks like Tom Hiddleston in Godzilla Skull Island in a way. But he shows up and he's introduced in one scene. And there's a storyline where he lost his brother, only brought up twice. There's also this uh, crazy conspiracy theory type plotline with Millie Bobby Brown and uh, Ryan Tyre Henry. Sorry, I'm so bad with names. But anyways, their plotline was probably the weakest aspects of the film. It's just so cliche and, you know, I did find some funny parts with it, but overall it, it was just, you know, like all the human characters and their plot lines, disappointing. The villain also, he's just like a normal villain who wants to take the world captive with a very big weapon and he has an accent and he gives speeches, but this time we don't know his backstory or his motivation, so it really makes for a lackluster villain who, even though played by a um, pretty good actor, he he's just there to introduce... Sorry, I just about almost gave you a spoiler. It, it just almost spilled out of my mouth. Sorry about that. But anyways, the human villain was just a way to lead to this other kaiju that shows up. And it's pretty lackluster. So overall, I didn't like the character plot lines. I did have some, it had some funny jokes. Um, I did have some fun with it. But overall, it was pretty lackluster. Like a Godzilla King of the Monsters. If not more. But anyways, that's not where he what we're here to see. We're here to see Godzilla versus Kong and overall I thought it delivered on that and it was a lot of fan service. So let's go on to our final ranking. And I thought it was a great movie. There was some great Godzilla versus Kong action. There was a lot of destroying buildings. There was a lot of monster mayhem, the stuff you want to see from a monster vs movie and a movie called Godzilla vs Kong. The character storylines aren't as good, but overall I thought the directing was great. The music did a good job, and the CGI was wonderful. So if you like Godzilla, if you like Kong, you love it. I give this a 9.8 out of 10. It's very entertaining and I recommend you watch it. Fun fact, people were cheering in the movie theaters. And it's not a Marvel movie. So that just gives you an impression of what people who are not me think. So it's a must watch.
And thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe and click the bell if you want more content from me. Tell me if you like the movie and if you haven't seen it but you're going to see it. Do you have HBO Max or are you going to watch it on the TV? Sadly, HBO Max doesn't work for me. Anyways, this has been Schofield Studios where you're the audience. And cut. A ranking of all the MonsterVerse movies coming up with Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh, and then I reviewed the whole MonsterVerse franchise.